Hello there, it's Bobby here. Just uh, been reading a really good children's book. Um, it's probably more for middle school, you know, high school level where you're talking about government, civics, community, the foundation of our country, the founding fathers, all that good stuff. And I also think it's good for elementary school students as well. Because again, there's no time that's too early to teach our kids about the flag, about the colonies, about the foundation of our country and the Founding Fathers. Rush Limbaugh did a really great series of books. This first one is called Rush Revere and the Brave Pilgrims. It involves a time-traveling horse that also talks, so that's kind of entertaining. Um, <laughs> let's just go ahead and start reading Rush Revere and the Brave Pilgrims, Chapter 1. I love here because there's just so many pictures in here, illustrations of different things that they would have um, had back in the colonial times, you see throughout the um, book. Just and kind of like just how they how they wore, you know, what their clothes were like, what they ate, what life was like on the Mayflower and the other ships that came over. It's just it's quite it's quite fascinating actually. So let me just go ahead and um, read a little bit on here. The uh, prologue, okay, the prologue. The sea was wide, cold and blustery. The large wooden ship rocked hard against the rolling waves. I'd been on the Mayflower for only 30 minutes, but already my head was leaning over the side just in case I had to feed the fish. Water splashed up from the side of the hull and rained down upon the deck. You there, a voice shouted from nearby. I turned around to see a sailor staring and pointing in my direction. He was a couple of inches taller than me. His shoulders were broad and his beard was black and scraggly with a thin scar above his cheek. That's right, I'm talking to you. Get your landlubber legs over here on below deck. Couldn't the sailor see? I was in no position to move, let alone walk across the ship when the deck felt like a washing machine with a spin cycle on extra high. No, of course not. For starters, washing machines didn't exist in the year 1620. I turned back toward the sea as another wave of nausea swelled inside me. Maybe my decision to teleport aboard the Mayflower and journey with the pilgrims hadn't been such a good idea after all. In fact, maybe now would be a good time to time jump back to modern day America and get some seasickness pills. Yes, that's it. I could get the pills, stabilize my motion sickness, then return before the ship reached the new world. Suddenly someone grabbed my arm and spun me around. I nearly jumped into the water when a large sailor shouted directly into my face. This whole lot of you makes me sick, he said. We should throw you all saints overboard. What's your name? Saints? This was not my first encounter with someone from the past, although I was feeling extremely queasy. I tipped my hat and introduced myself while trying not to fall over. I'm not a saint or a separatist. I am Rush Revere, I said. I'm a history teacher from the 21st century. I've come to 21st century. Blimey, you're mad. Whole lot of you. Do the guy care if you make it to New England? The sailor laughed as he pushed his face into mine and, I, and said, I don't. In fact, I'd rather feed you to the sharks and be done with you. His breath smelled foul like rotten fish. I gagged and suddenly I vomited as the boat lurched to the side and sent me face first into an unsuspecting sailor. We tumbled to the deck and I rolled up against the railing. I sat up, realizing that I felt a great deal better. Unfortunately, I couldn't say the same thing about stinky fish breath. He was covered from head to toe in my regurgitated lunch. Arr, you puked all over me, you piece of scum. I'll throw you overboard. He scrambled to his feet and charged at me like a bull targeting a matador. My horse, Liberty, was aboard the Mayflower somewhere. Liberty, I yelled, stumbling backward. I could use a little help over here. Now look, I know what you're thinking. What's a horse doing on the deck of the Mayflower in the middle of a storm-tossed sea? Good question. The truth is, my liberty is no ordinary horse. The ship rocked back and forth as the water surged again over its bow, crashed down on the deck as if a large waterfall had been turned on and off. The sailor was only a few feet away and closing fast. I scanned the length of the Mayflower, searching high and low. Another rush of water nearly swept me off my feet. I looked down to see a large fish flopping around. The boat rocked again. 
and the fish slid right between my leg between the legs of the sailor. Not a bad idea, I thought. Right before the sailor grabbed me, I dove headfirst through his legs. For a split second, I thought I was there and beyond his grasp. The sailor's beefy hand grabbed my leg, then my coat, then hoisted me up by my collar. I hope you can swim, yelled Fish Breath. From over his shoulder, I finally spotted what I've been searching for. And I hope you can fly, Liberty replied to him. Oh yes, Liberty can talk. I told you he wasn't an ordinary horse. Before the man could even turn around to see who had spoken, Liberty kicked his hind legs, sent the sailor sailing into the air, and then he fell into the web of nets. Perfect shot, Liberty said. You appeared in the nick of time, I said, starting to feel sick again. Leaping to the Mayflower in the middle of the storm wasn't my idea, Liberty said, speaking very fast. Yes, I can leap to different times in American history, but I am not a weatherman. And the horses don't like boats. There's an awful lot of water surrounding us, and this constant rocking back and forth, it's making me hungry. Liberty turned his neck from side to side as if searching for the nearest feeding feed bag. Do you know where we can get some food around here? I slipped into Liberty's saddle and said, Please, let's not talk about food right now. I need you to open the time portal. Back to the future, Liberty grinned. Yes, back to modern day America, please. Just try not to leap us into a tornado. Liberty started galloping and yelled, rush, rush, rushing from history. A swirling circle of gold and purple appeared on the deck of the Mayflower. As it grew bigger, Liberty bolted for the corner and the center and jumped. We were back in modern day America. We'll start chapter one in the next video. Thank you for joining me in this wonderful story that we're going to be reading.